Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rate at a time, back with his Wednesday expert, Matt, the mortgage guy. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. So what I thought I'd do here is I want to lay out two scenarios. Uh, they're going to be about interest rates, which obviously impact mortgage, but we're going to also relate it back to the real estate market, real estate investing. Uh, so you ready to go? Let's do it. All right. So uh, there's a gentleman we both follow named Barry Habib, uh, where his kind of base case is he believes rates are going to tick up in the short term, short term, call it three to six months. And then Barry's like, Fed's going to be weak, Fed's going to give up, and they're going to lower rates. And I think he's actually saying mortgage rates can get back in the twos. So I wanted to kind of play that scenario out, right? If, if Barry is right, what do we think happens in the real estate market, refi business, you know, all of that. So play it out for me. What do you think happens? Um, yeah, I mean, in that scenario, I think me and you agreed that that, that short of a time horizon feels kind of crazy, but what do I know? What do you know? Yeah. Um, you know, Barry's the crystal ball award winner. So um, we, we can't, we can't just, uh, you no. know, discount what he's saying, but yeah, if, if there is, you know, aggressive action by the fed, mm -hmm. which causes inflation to, to come down quickly um, the, under, under that scenario, um, you know, within three to six months, we could see this reversal of interest rates mm -hmm. where wherever we're, at, at that point, let's call it 4%, mm -hmm. um, you know, rates, um, you know, the economy tanks, stock market loses 40% of its value, and then interest rates come down maybe from four to three. Um, I think the scenario of his that I played out a couple of weeks ago when, when I went through that 2022 kind of market forecast, we didn't even get to 4%. We only got to 3.75 and then it came back down to, to 3% or so. So um, if that plays out, um, and, you know, we, we see inflation come down, um, we see rates come down, then, you know, by the end of, uh, the year, let's call it in, in, in Barry's, you know, mm -hmm. prediction, uh, rates come back down to 3%, that's fuel on the fire for demand in the real estate market. Then, you know, we, 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 in my opinion, would see more home price appreciation, double digit oh. home price appreciation. Um, you know, couple that with something we haven't talked about yet, but any sort of first time home buyer <laughs> incentives or programs or things like that, you know, it could it could provide steroids and fuel to a housing market that truly needs some rest. You know, there's yeah. been enough steroid, there's been enough pump and iron. Let's 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 have a few rest days here. Yeah, no, I think that's very well said. I think I think if Barry's situation plays out, not only do we see housing have another double digit, which means all, all assets go up. I think the stock market recovers uh, all of that. I um, I think what we've seen in the last twelve months is unhealthy. I, I've lived th I've lived through a cycle where we had three unhealthy years before in real estate, and it doesn't end well. A price has to be paid. So I. Um, Again, Barry's the winner. I think he's won it two or three times. Uh, I'm not encouraged by that. I, th I think it leads to a lot of very negative outcomes. So I, I think we just need to pay the price. So I, I, I hope that doesn't happen because yeah, I just think assets go up and it's I right. Don't think it is well. So yeah, and that's the thing too is you know in in a scenario that is healthy for the housing market, we finally rip off this band aid. We finally let interest rates go back to a normalized level where we're not manipulating them and, and pulling them down with, mm -hmm. with, with monetary policy. And, you know, I've said it before for all the clients that I work with and all the buyers, if we saw a housing market that saw 3% home price appreciation or was flat, it would be really good, It'd really be welcomed. healthy. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, you, me, a bunch of folks we know own a bunch of real estate, 10 to 15% home price appreciation is great. We just get rich while we sleep. Yeah. I don't want it. I yeah. want a flat housing market where there's a balance between supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Home buyers that I'm working with who are trying to buy their first home can go out there and they're one of three offers. Um, you know, they're, they're paying list price. And, you know, I think from a, from a, a client experience perspective, I've heard this from people, they would rather pay um, a, a premium and have it be an easier time. And the premium might not be price, the premium might be interest rate. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe it's a four and a half percent interest rate, but you're only up against three offers. Right. And the home buying experience is a more normalized one. There's no frenzy buying. There's not 38 offers. There's not removing every single contingency. You know, you've got contingencies in place. You're offering list price. Your the, the premium is the four and a half percent interest rate. Right. But you're you're in a healthy housing market where you you might pay the same um, price as somebody who bought six months ago. So yeah. um, that to me, um, you know, would be welcomed. Yeah, that's where I want to go. So let's paint the other scenario. Let's pretend like uh, Jerome Powell becomes a mini Paul Volcker. Let's say he takes the Fed's funds rate to, I don't know, let's say 3% just to pick a round number. And let's say he gets there in 18 months. So it's not overnight, but he gets there in 18 months. Um, you know, again, right, a 3% Fed funds rates probably has the 10 year at four and a half, four and, four and three quarters, probably has mortgage rates at five and a half, six. I mean, are those kind of? Yeah, I think so. If, if that played out and, you know, that is the other, you know, kind of um, uh, extreme. Mm -hmm. I don't think oh, anybody yeah. predicts, you know, that much. Like when I look at the MBA's predictions, you know, and, I, and, and you look at maybe like Q3 of 2023, 18 months ahead, mm -hmm. they're predicting that the Fed's funds rate will be like one, three, seven, five. Okay. The tenure will be at two and a half. Um, so in your scenario where they get it all the way to three, yeah, um, yeah the interest rates are going to be much higher. As, as much as I will argue with people that are, gonna, that are telling me that housing market's going to go down 20% because of interest rates mm -hmm. um, right now, where it's like this slow uptick, if it was that drastic, I think five and a half percent interest rates, you know, make it so where the housing prices go down 10 or 15%. Because that's going to truly impact, you know, people's purchasing power. I, I showed people where, you know, if you could afford 400 at this purchase price, you know, you might be at 380. So it's mm -hmm. it's 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 really only like five percent difference in mm -hmm. in how much you can purchase. Um, but you know, to go from three to five and a half, um, that'd be fairly drastic. And and I wouldn't be surprised if that had, you know, a pretty significant downward pull by significant. I say 15, 20%, not 60, you know, the sky is yeah. not going to fall and real estate's not going to come down. But um, yeah, th that would be my prediction is, you know, mid fives on interest rate, if those things were to happen and 15 to 20% pullback on, you know, uh, home prices or, um, or values. Yeah. Well, let's, let's play this picture out, right? If Paul Volcker, or if it's a Paul Volcker, if Jerome Powell is a mini Paul Volcker and does this, Real estate's going to be the, the tail that wags the dog because what will happen first is we will be in a recession. Second, we will have businesses that were zombie companies who were financed with 0% interest or thereabouts go out of business. Um, the, the economy, jobless claims will go up. I mean, it will be, this is why the Fed doesn't do this, right? Paul Volcker was the last guy that says like, I'm willing to take the heat, but I'm going to break the back of inflation. I don't think there's a lot of people that think Jerome Powell has that in him. But I just wanted to play both scenarios. Uh, I think one where rates race up, even if they go up slowly, but it, it goes up continually for 18 months, we have a recession and it's arguably painful. And yes, real estate is hurt, uh, but stocks are hurt. People are hurt a lot. It, it's, it's bad. I think, I think frankly, continuing the party and, and getting everybody even more drunk or up on ecstasy or whatever they're gonna be doing in, in option one, that doesn't end well either. Right. Um, so, you know, he's got he's to split the middle somehow. Uh, we've got to extract equity. There are, are assets that are overinflated. Uh, it's it's going to be a dicey year, I think. Yeah. And I think you're exactly right. Where like, here's the two extremes. Neither mm -hmm. one of them is really ends well. Somewhere in the middle, I've heard it described as, you know, the feds walking a tightrope. They really yeah. are. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we're going to be bringing you this together every week. I'll be talking on the daily financial news every day to see what's happening. Uh, I certainly hope he's a little bit of Paul Volcker because, I, and again, I think uh, I think he needs to move half a point. I think that I think he has to shock the system and being a little pansy and only doing a quarter 
is not going to do it. So I'm calling a half a point rate hike in March. So we'll see what happens. We 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 shall see. Yeah. And I think for 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 any listeners, you know, it'll be interesting to to have these conversations every week because because I'll try to bring a little bit of buyer sentiment, a little bit of what I'm sure. hearing, um, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, straight from buyers who are out there buying, you know, as investors, buying as 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 primary residents. Um what they say, what real estate agents say, what other mortgage professionals are saying, that's uh, you know the whole goal of my channel. Plug, quick plug for Matt the Mortgage Guy on YouTube. Go check it out. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, rather than see January's data come out late February and then put in some newspaper in March, I'm going to tell you January's you know data, buyer sentiment, and what what I'm seeing and feeling in the market in real time. So that's what you'll get on this these uh, one rental at a time interviews, right. real live data from all kinds of experts. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Have a good day. All right. Thanks, Mike. You too. Mm -hmm. Yep.